Let's look at a comparison between cardiac and skeletal muscle. In a previous chapter, you may have already looked at skeletal muscle cells, and in a chapter on tissues, you undoubtedly saw a comparison between skeletal cardiac and smooth. When you look at skeletal versus cardiac, the muscles work very differently because they have very different functions. Skeletal muscle cells will give very rapid contractions. You often need to move very fast. If you couldn't do that, you might not live for very long. But you don't want very rapid muscle contraction when it comes to cardiac. You want a muscle that's slower, but a whole lot more forceful, a lot more strength in the contraction. Now, if you look at how these cells work differently, obviously they have a lot of similarities, but there's got to be something different about them. When comparing the two, skeletal muscle cells have a much larger diameter and cardiac has a smaller. You say, well, what does that have to do with the speed of the contractions? Skeletal cells have a larger diameter. That means you're going to have more cell membrane. If they've got more surface area and more cell membrane, they'll have more ion channels. And with more ion channels, you can get a more rapid depolarization of the cell, which of course is what has to happen if you want muscle to contract. You look at that compared to cardiac, smaller diameter, you'll have less cell membrane and fewer ion channels in it. So the number of ion channels makes a big difference. More ion channels, more rapid depolarization, just the opposite with the cardiac. But also skeletal muscle cells rely more on sodium movement to get their depolarization. Remember, sodium is the most abundant ion in that extracellular environment. So with more ion channels and more of them being sodium, you can get a lot of positive ion into the cell very quickly and you can get very rapid depolarizations. Skeletal muscle cells can depolarize in about two to five milliseconds. That's very rapidly. But again, with cardiac, with fewer ion channels, and they also rely more on the movement of calcium that's less abundant in the extracellular environment. So with fewer ion channels and moving more calcium, you're going to get much slower movement of ion. And the slower the ion moves in, the slower the depolarizations. And notice it takes about a hundred times longer for a cardiac cell to depolarize. And this is what you've got to happen. What's going to make a heart and that muscle in it very good are slow, very forceful contractions. Look at what you're trying to move, blood. That's a very thick, viscous material. If the heart was made of skeletal muscle and these cells depolarized and tried to contract so rapidly, you'd hit that blood in those chambers very fast and you wouldn't move very much of it. But with a very slow contraction that's much stronger, you move a lot more blood. That's why you need cardiac cells to be built differently and to function differently. And something else you often see going inside a muscle, and you see a lot of this with cardiac, is something called calcium-induced calcium release. To look at what's going on with this, you have to go back to one of the organelles, the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Remember, that's what you call that smooth endoplasmic reticulum inside of a muscle cell. You look back at the functions of this organelle, one of them is storing calcium. So what happens with calcium-induced calcium release is this, right? Well, something like norepinephrine lets calcium channels open on cardiac cells, the calcium comes in. When the calcium comes in and the charge is swapped and you generate an action potential, that will let calcium out of this organelle. Basically what happens, you get a very large amount of calcium released inside these cardiac cells when they depolarize and contract. And that's going to help to give a very strong, forceful contraction. Remember back when you look at muscle, as long as calcium and ATP are present, that actin and myosin continues to move. That's going to give you a very strong, forceful contraction. And again, you want to move something like thick, viscous blood. That's exactly what you need. But something else you hear about with cardiac muscle cells are these refractory periods. Notice how there are two of them, an absolute and a relative. The absolute refractive period is that time in which cardiac muscle cells are insensitive to further stimulation. Too many ion channels are open. The cell is depolarized at this state. But there's also a relative where the cell exhibits reduced sensitivity. Some of these ion channels are still open. The cell hasn't completely repolarized yet. So you could get another stimulation, but it's going to take a larger than normal stimulus.
more of something like norepinephrine for that to occur. And you need these long refractory periods when it comes to cardiac, where you don't get tetany. Tetany is that constant contraction. That can be deadly when it comes to something like cardiac muscle, not so much when it comes to most skeletal. Here's some other illustrations to look at things like circulation and structure of the heart. And again, there are the books listed at the end.